Hello and welcome to episode something of the Heart of Markness Led Zeppelin podcast. What episode is it? I don't know. Well, it's not episode 219, I'll tell you that. It must be episode 220. All right. Welcome to episode 220 of the Heart of Markness Led Zeppelin podcast. Our content is fresh, never frozen. And I think you can taste the difference. Today, I'm doing a show. I've done this show before. But this is a... Excuse me, I'm going to cough for about half an hour. Thank you. <clears throat> Allergy season here in the Willamette Valley. Uh, I work with someone who moved here from Wyoming uh, last summer. And uh, they and their partner are experiencing allergies for the first time like i keep getting sick like you're not sick this is this is allergies feels exactly the same acts exactly the same except you have to go to work and uh yeah so apologies for uh, <clears throat> any raspiness etc and as always as it is in the summer months my fan is a foot away from me in the window, but I've turned it way down. So if the noise does bother you, just pretend that I am piloting a small Piper Cub aircraft or a Cessna. I don't know. Single engine little vroom vroom plane. And that I'm doing this as we're at, you know, uh, 15,000 feet or 8,000 feet. I don't know how high those fucking things go, <clears throat> but just think airplane. All right. Why are you doing Texas Pop Festival? Mark, you've already done this show. Mark, what are you, an asshole? Kinda. But the reason I'm doing it is this is a new release, a new <clears throat> matrix of the soundboard and the audience tape. And it also is <clears throat> keeping with the current trend of using AI tools to separate instruments and remix an album. We've heard that several times. And um, in fact, I was just talking in the in the Facebook group, the Heart of Markness Facebook group, with some folks about that. A pair of Chris's, actually, about this very thing. You know, it's, it's kind of a consumer version of uh, <clears throat> the software and techniques used by Giles Martin when he Remix the Sgt. Pepper in the Beatles Revolver, taking four track tapes and using AI to parse out instruments to make it a virtual 16 track and then remix and, re you know, re-record. It's great. So we have that going on, and that has been going on for a couple of years in the community. Um, one of the big ones was in Celebration for a King, if you guys remember that one. <clears throat> that was the compilation from Landover. 77 Led Zeppelin, if you're new, um, which is not the strongest run of shows in 77. It's a very, very fine run of shows, but it's not like New York or L.A. or that second night in Cleveland or any of the other little onesie twosie amazing shows. <clears throat> but the gentleman that did that used similar techniques of parsing out the instruments so that you could have tracks one, two, three, and four, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. However, you want to do it, so you can move Robert to the center of the chord and keep Jimmy on the right, Jonesy a little bit on the left, Bonzo dead center, with the cymbals having left and right stereo. You know, the hi hats on the right side, and the crashes and rides are on the uh, left side to you. And that's and they made it sound like almost like a professional recording. I mean, rich enough that if you were hearing it on the radio or something, or it was just playing in a room, you wouldn't go, what is this amateur recorded home cassette taped piece of fucking garbage I'm listening to? No, you would just say, hmm, that sounds pretty good. So that's been going on and it's growing. And the thing, I love that it's growing because, you know, first of all, it takes tapes and shows that are already great, like Blueberry Hill, Night Owl. With this matrix of shit, six sources or some night nightmarish number like that. Maybe it was just four, but still, you know what what you're doing with a matrix of four recordings is you're taking four stereo recordings. So let's just assume they're stereo, 
which is eight individual tracks <clears throat> and you have to sync them up exactly so that they're all playing at the exact same time and then using EQ and volume adjust the mix of each recording in the sound so that you have a compilation without 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 it's it it's it sound down 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 ding like 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 this 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 or without having the symbols and shit getting swishy which is an impossibility but uh, that'll be taken care of with AI as well I'm sure <clears throat> so yay that is why I'm doing this plus it's it's not an amazing show this one the Texas Pop Festival which is uh, August 31st 1969 it's good it's really good it's a short set Zeppelin had to catch a flight so they had to play a short set they were rushed it's hot it's fucking August in Texas and uh, they did a great little short set and I will read it to you because you will be able to download this from the heart of boom in fact I'll read you <clears throat> This is the revised edition. He did uh, a Matrix. No, who was it? Well, shit. I'll look that up later. Maybe he signed the bottom. La 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 la. Oh, it's, it is Night Owl. Okay, yeah, it's, it's more Night Owl. Good, 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 good. So here are Night Owl's notes. Demix Matrix of two independent recordings. Number one is the stereo stage recording soundboard from the quarter inch real masters <clears throat> dumped to a seven and a half inches per second safety copy so first generation real to real copy it's seven and a half inches great to digital audio tape great to cdr great digital 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 and it was the dadgad cdr the audience recording is a low gen copy a bootleg cd plays pure bob tarantura release the original version was a simple matrix of the two synchronized recordings. Here, both sources have been demixed and, except for atmosphere between songs and where the stage source is cut, there are some cuts, only the bass and drum stems have been used from the audience source. Audience tape, rather. For the stage board recording, the drums and vocals have been centered, as the original tape sounds a bit disjointed. And the set list is... <clears throat> introduction, ladies and gentlemen, Led Zeppelin. Train kept a rolling. I can't quit you, baby. Dazed and confused. You shook me, baby. Or you shook me. How many more times? And da 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 da, da including you know medleys and uh, communication breakdown, which doesn't have too many medleys and doesn't really stretch out. They did it in four and a half minutes because they really had to fucking bounce. Like a Peter Grant's on the side of the stage, look, you know, pointing at his watch, going, hurry the fuck up or I'm going to pick you up and carry you off. So <clears throat> that's what they did. And let's jump in. What am I going to play? Like I said, you can go to hardermarkness.com, look for this show, use the search function and your giant brain. You're a hominid. And um, I say that because sometimes I get messages. Which are like, what's the set list? Google it, asshole. Ah, I could be nicer. I should be nicer. So uh, I read you the set list. I've talked, wasted your time for almost nine minutes. Let's listen to a song. Let's open with a blues. I was going to do I Can't Quit You, but I decided to go with You Shook Me. So You Shook Me. Ba -da -da -da. August 31st, 1969. Led Zeppelin at... The Texas International Pop Festival. And there's a video of this. I think a 16 millimeter film was professionally shot. And you can uh, see it on YouTube with the time code and everything. Jimmy's wearing a cowboy hat. It's fun. It's good stuff. Um, one thing, I haven't listened to this whole recording. I've only listened to uh, I Can't Quit You Baby and Some of You Shook Me. But the <clears throat> radio interference that would cut in to the soundboard source seems to have been uh, reduced a bit. So let's hope that carries through the whole recording. And let's listen to You Shook Me. Ba -na -na -na. Show me all 
Now that sounded pretty fucking good. Now granted, it sounded pretty fucking good to start, but it sounded better. Night Owl did a good job. And there's a little distortion on the bass and on the low end, but shit, that could be, you know, the the uh, analog audience tape could have overloaded a little bit. The stage, the soundboard recorder could have overloaded a little bit. Who knows? These are not professional recordings. The fact that somebody made them with the fucking reel-to-reel -reel recorder and a cassette recorder in 1969 and end up with something that sounds that good is astonishing. And both of those people taping were going against the rules. They were being naughty. And look at that. And the audience tape being sold by Tarantura as a bootleg well, that's not only against the rules, that's against the law. Tarantura's being naughty. And yet, thanks to that naughtiness, all these great shows, all these great shows, I've got like 350 episodes of The Heart of Markness so far. Counting the bonus episodes? Yeah, a shitload. Um, and each and every one of those was recorded illicitly. Some for profit, but mostly just to trade and share with people. So God bless the naughty people. The rule benders, the rule breakers. Sometimes you need a little evil. Just a touch. Just a touch. A little bit of pushing, pushing the boundaries. And now here we are, more than half a century later listening to this and going, wow, that sounds pretty fucking good. Sounds good. A little more polished, a little more modern. Keeping it a little more relevant. Because there's a whole generation of teenage kids discovering Led Zeppelin online that need to hear this shit. This is the best music that's ever been played. <laughs> and it should go on. So thank you, Night Owl. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. What are we going to listen to now? Let's listen to... Let's do Dazed and Confused. Yeah, Dazed and Confused. 
Bum, bum, bum. Then we will do how many more times? Yeah, all right. Days are confused, folks. About 20 minutes, a little over 20 minutes. I'll talk to you then. Whoops. That's how many more times. All right. Days are confused, guys. It's not 20 minutes.
Absolutely lovely and fun and good and all those things. Jonesy, man. All of them. All of them. I was primarily listening to Jonesy because he's a fucking beast. Just that. Constantly, constantly at that tempo. Fuck. With that cool fat fender sound. I love it. All right. Hooray. 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 You can find me anywhere that you can find me because you found me. I'm on all podcast places, all places. You want to listen to me on Spotify? I double dog dare you to listen to me on Spotify. Android store? Sure, probably. iPhone? Yep. Stitcher? Yep. Straight off the tap on SoundCloud? You bet. But you already know that because you found me. But I have to say it anyway because every other podcast says it. So there you go. I also have the aforementioned Facebook group. 230 of the best people ever on earth. Oh, whoops. Hang on a second. You're not going to hear that. There we go. Maybe you will hear it. I don't know. I don't know how this works. I muted the track. How many more times started playing while I was talking? Ah, <clears throat> yes, Facebook, 230 people. You are welcome to join. It's the only thing I'm on Facebook for. And it's like I said, 230 other folks who love Led Zeppelin, love classic rock, live music, etc. Great place to hang out, ask questions, share shit. Uh, I'm on Twitter as Heart of Markness, and I would love it if you would give me a follow. I will follow you back. That's how it works. I'm also on Facebook, Heart of Markness. You're seeing the the, the thread throughout all these. Um, I'm going to be on Instagram as Heart of Markness. I am not yet. I'm on as myself, but I don't have a Heart of Markness account. But I'm going to do that. Um, and I have the also aforementioned website, heartofmarkness.com, which is just a simple 
WordPress, WordPress blog wherein I uh, post these podcasts and the links to the shows that I cover. So if you want this whole show, go to heartofmarkness.com. Look for this show. It'll be there. And it, all of this happens courtesy of the following titans upon whose shoulders rests this humble yet mighty podcast. I am, of course, talking about my patrons. A laurel and hearty handshake go out to Keith and Tilda, Brian, Steve, Ed, Big Ed, I believe, Kenny, John from West Footscray, Picard, Knegarn, Rob from Melbourne, Australia, Wayne, Brad, Danielle, Tracy, Other David, Bonzo Billy, and Mimo. Thank you very much, my friends. You are the best. The best. They pay for the website hosting. They pay for the website. They pay for the SoundCloud hosting. They pay for the cloud storage for the shows that I share with you. They pay for all of it. The microphone through which I'm speaking with you. All courtesy of these titans upon whose shoulders rest this humble yet mighty podcast. Thank you guys. If you're interested in being a patron, go to patreon.com slash heart of markness or click the Patreon banner at heart of See if there's something there you like. Moving right along. We bring you, it's not a secret now, how many more times, or actually how many more times, boom, 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 boom. There, great song, great show, great band, great Scott. Here you go. I want you to cool. I said I want to the grill. Come on, come on, I want to hear it. We got to, uh, we're going to have to say goodnight according to the program. We're going to finish off with a thing called How Many More Times. Unfortunately, the program seems to have got a little delayed, so that's what's going to Nothing we can do about it. But I'd like to introduce you to Led Zeppelin on bass guitar, John Paul Jones. John Paul Jones. On drums, John Henry Bonham. John Bonham. Guitar, Jimmy Page. And myself, Robert Plant.
Sorry, I had to do that. I think that's cool. But it's got the shits of me, and I ain't no fool. But there's just one thing that I want you to do. Cause little girl, I'm in my eyes on you. I'm only asking you because you're a friend. But if you say no, you're gonna hurt me in pain. I want you to squeeze my lemon.
ladies and gentlemen, the Led Zeppelin. Come on, let's hear it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jethro Tull. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, it took him forever to end that song. They were ending that song, and I went downstairs, said hey to my housemate, preheated the oven, took the key shot of the oven, set it on the counter, because I'm going to cook it as soon as I'm done with this, came upstairs, and there's still blamp, 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 blamp. Come on, what are you, the who? Finish the fucking song. All right, there we go. Thank you very much. That was lovely. Um, while you were listening to that, I was reading some notes from um, Night Owl, the gentleman who does this stuff, and how he took the audience tape, a mono tape. The soundboard tape basically has Robert in the left channel and Jimmy in the right, with Jonesy and Bonzo uh, very far back. The audience tape is where he took the bass and the drums, separated them from the rest of the recording, and then separated them from each other so he could move them around in a stereo field and give more of a stereo sound, which is exactly what he did, which is exactly why it sounds good. It's really nice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Night Owl. Your name is different on Royal Orleans, but I don't whatever night owl thank you you are wonderful hey if you listen to this if you'd be down for an interview i would love to talk to you i would love to have a show um, about this whole ai muxing demuxing demixing uh process and i would love to talk to you about it and and how it works challenges rewards pitfalls etc if you're down Otherwise, if you're not, no worries. Thank you for the uh, wonderful music. And thank you for listening, he says, turning to his audience with a smile. I will be, uh, I hope to be back this weekend with a classic rock podcast. I hope to last weekend, too. I just did not have it in me. Sorry. I have a wonderful Yes show from uh, the Relayer Tour with Patrick Moraz. Really good quality, 1976, I believe it was. Uh, I just downloaded while this was while we were doing this a Roger Waters show from 1984 with Eric Clapton on guitar from the Pros and Cons of Hitchhiking Tour with excellent sound. I'd like to share that with you after I listen to it myself. So there's things. I mean, there's irons in the fire. I just have to take them out and go here. Listen. So I should do that. But it's Father's Day weekend. Who knows? Oh, it's Father's Day weekend, by the way. So take care of that shit. Um, yeah, be good to yourselves and each other, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>